Uh, I like to think of the James Webb Space Telescope as NASA's vehicle for the deepest space exploration that humanity can do. We designed Webb to have a larger mirror, an infrared optimized system to see farther into the universe than Hubble can today. This infrared optimization also means that we can do things like peer inside dust clouds uh, in our own galaxy to see where stars and planets are being born today. We start with the very smallest pieces we put together and we test them in relevant environments. If they're going to be cold, we test them cold. If they're going to deploy, we make sure they deploy. Um, if they are going to experience the violence of launch, and every piece of the telescope will, we put it into a chamber and uh, then on a shaker table where it feels the same forces uh, that it will through launch. So it's just a lot of testing and as you build the telescope up to ever larger structures, you test each of those as you build it up. Uh, right now at the Goddard Space Flight Center in the clean room, they've uh, taken the telescope through that vibration testing and now they're measuring the optics. They're uh, making sure that the telescope uh, optics and instruments are where they need to be after they've gone through a simulated launch. Uh, you just have to keep testing and retesting all the things that you expect the telescope to experience. And so for us on web, that means we need to make sure it can survive launch. So we do vibration testing at a small component level. And as we build it up, we test that as well. Because we are uh, what's called a cryogenic telescope, meaning a very cold telescope, we put it into chambers and take the temperature down to just a few tens of degrees above absolute zero, sort of minus 400 degrees. Fahrenheit, make sure all the parts still work uh, as they are planned to. And because we're so large and we have to fold up to fit inside the rocket, we do deployment testing. So we make sure our mirrors can fold out and our secondary mirror can fold down and the big sun shield can deploy. All those tests have to be done several times on Earth before we launch it into space. And then of course we also, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier here at uh, Goddard, they're testing the optics of the system. Once you have done some of these tests, you want to make sure your telescope and instruments still function like they're supposed to. Uh, I know for a fact that the science community can't wait to study the TRAPPIST systems with the James Webb Space Telescope. Last week I was at a science conference and this very system was talked about how it would be analyzed with Webb. Uh, so the science community is ready to go uh, for exoplanet studies with Webb. So something like TRAPPIST-1 system and even other nearby systems will certainly be among the very early things that uh, Webb studies. Each of our mirrors, and there are 18 segments, is adjustable. We can move these segments left and right, we can move them in and out, we can move them around this way, and we can actually change their shape a little bit. So one of the lessons we've learned from Hubble is that you must put active optics, so to speak. You can make the mirror adjustable. So when it goes up, we know we can adjust it to be perfect after launch. Because we have such a very large mirror, one of the things we needed to do is make sure that uh, our mirrors had the right optical shape as we changed their temperature from room temperature to the extremely cold temperatures in space. So we had to develop measuring techniques that would allow us to do that. And those very same measuring techniques have been commercialized uh, into uh, machines that people will use to measure the shape of the cornea of your eye. So if you were going to get uh, laser surgery or you needed measurements of your eye, you be using the same technology that we're going to send a million miles away into space. Uh, because we built Webb to really peer back to see the first stars and galaxies, and we've been working on it a long time for that, uh, I really want to see the answer back from that. Uh, but if I'm honest with myself, the thing that most excites me is that observation that somebody makes that reveals something completely unexpected. 
And that's what I'm looking forward to when somebody gets data back and they go, I wasn't expecting that at all. That's the real excitement of science. You can go to nasa.gov or jwst.nasa.gov and learn about the James Webb Space Telescope. There you'll find things like links to videos and thousands of images of the telescope, descriptions of the science, and even a little bit about the, the people the, who are building the telescope, and of course some of the fantastic engineering that's going on as well.